Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Silent Podcast, a place of everything but silent. I'm your host, Isaiah, and we're back to talk Big Brother Canada. Let's get into it. We have our co-host, per usual, we have Josie. Josie's going on. Hi, I'm so excited to talk about Big Brother. I feel like exam season has kind of, like, ruined my vibe, but podcasting with you all always makes me so happy and so positive, so I'm excited to chat about this week. All right, and then we also got you now. Hey guys, I'm excited too. I thought it was a crazy week. I thought it was a fun week, and I think we have a lot of things potentially brewing with these people. Brewing? What the flip? What the flip, man? <laughs> um, Please don't. Nah. Leave <laughs> but um, yeah, we're here to talk Big Brother Canada. You know, uh, this week after coming off a super chaotic week was. A little toned down, you know, but that's okay. It wasn't ter- it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was just like it was mid to me. I, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Do you guys think that this was uh, a-, a crazy week in your opinions? I think, like I said before, that it's a week where depending on who wins, could really switch up the direction of the game. Like I'm nervous for who oh. wins. Don't exactly know what I want to happen i usually don't root for mess but in this situation i think i kind of want some right josie i was gonna say your camera froze for a second did you, what did you say i didn't hear anything that was said to be real honest <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the week it's all right josie is is frozen and not able to do anything just like a lot of the cast of big brother canada it's all right guys so <laughs> Until she can get her connection together. Oh, uh, all right, she's back. All right, are we are we good, Josie? We good? I think we're good. Okay, just in case we're not, let's just let's just go on. All right, so this week was <laughs> different. <laughs> all right, so this week was different. Um, we got to see an Avery Hoh. So Avery was Hoh this week. And she wanted an easy week. She wanted to nominate uh, the people not in her alliance looking at Goose. Uh, we, she was playing around with the idea of Matt, but wasn't really it, and ultimately chose Tola. Now, uh, guys, obviously this is not the final noms. We did see Tola come off the block with a veto, and Matt eventually went up. Janelle, how do you feel about this whole thing? Like, did you think that uh, Avery's ideal nominations was the right way to go? Is yes. there a better way she could have handled it? How do you feel? Yes, about but there, I I agreed with her that this week she could have she the nominations that she had were good. I think that if one of these two people had gone home, she would be fine. Now, with what happened with the replacement nom, I'm not so sure where Avery's gonna sit depending on who gets this next HOH or, and whatever is going to happen on Sunday that no, none of us know about. All right, J- Josie, I think you're good. I think we're good, Josie. Hopefully, hopefully we're good. But, uh, Kiri. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till she, can, until she figures it out. But anyway, no, Janelle, I agree with you. I hate this. I, I hate this so much. But you know, I do think I do agree with you. I actually do think that I don't know what the question was. <laughs> Josie, you're so behind. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, Janelle, I do agree with you because <laughs> this is this is wild. All right, anyway, I do agree with you, Janelle, because I do think that Avery ultimately did have the right choice. This was a, a very coming in from a very chaotic week, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that Goose. No one was going to really care too much if Goose went up. And, and you know, Tola, you know, Lexus and Anthony were going to be mad. But I think we're at the point in the game where literally everybody's, like, in line with someone. Yeah. And it's going to kind of be hard to, like, navigate through this game without pissing somebody off. You feel me? Right. So, um, you know, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, I, I agreed with her. Perfect choice. Nice and easy. But I think it all went downhill. Spicy had an agenda. And if she was going to get a chance to push her agenda, she was going to do it. And she pushed hard and she was persistent along with Bailey. I think Bailey's influence helped a lot, but she got her 
way with that replacement, Dom, which I think was terrible. Oh, okay. so you do think that the replacement nom of Matt is terrible? So terrible. Let's try this again, Josie. Agreed. How do you? Feel? Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sorry, y'all. You agree with Janelle? So you think that uh, Matt as the replacement nom was a bad idea? Absolutely. I think that move benefited a lot more people than it did Avery herself. Uh, she stated it well. You know. Um, they were known as like a duo, like a friendship duo. I think it was Mavery. Mm-hmm. Maeve? I think mm-hmm. it's Maeve. Um, and so obviously if Matt was HOH, he might have put up a girl on the block, but it would have been Bailey before Avery. It would have been Bailey before Kayla. It would have been, sorry, not Avery, um, Bailey before Kayla. Same thing. Like, all the members of Hot Chocolate would have been safe under a Matt HOH with the amount of house guests left. Yeah. Do I think he would have put up maybe another person on the block that is a director's in addition to Bailey? For sure. But ultimately, you have the numbers. And I feel like Matt was not going to put up Avery over a lot of these other house guests. And Matt preaches about loyalty all the time. So I just feel like that was not the smartest move for her. She made a move for the Alliance and not for herself. And I don't even think it was best for the Alliance, actually. I feel like it just fractured them more. So if so, in, you, in your guys' opinions, who should she have nominated instead? Uh, Goose. Or um, Todd. <laughs> Todd. Okay, Todd. Bailey okay. is going to be pissed off, but considering how fractured the hot chocolates feels now, pissing off Bailey was the lesser of two evils. Nobody was who was going to be mad that Todd was going. Bailey, and Matt going does nothing but benefit, in my opinion, Bailey. Because now I fear that the two sides of hot chocolate potentially could start firing at each other, and then we're going to see the Baileys, who I do enjoy, the Gooses. The Todds watching them shoot at each other and they're gonna mosey on by. I'm like, yo. So I thought that this was a terrible move for the hot chocolates as a whole. I thought that Victoria pushing this, depending on who wins, could really, really, really get her in trouble. Kayla was ready to keep Matt. She was like, all right, I can, but Victoria was like, no, we can't do it. Like she kept on Kayla and convinced her, like, no, we cannot back down it seemed like victoria even com- contemplated keeping matt but ultimately was thinking sorry your side needs to win dougie and then you'll get rid of one of my pawns I'm- she was being selfish as she should be in a game like this but i still think it was terrible overall because of how it's leaving the core alliance the hot chocolates which in my opinion is the best end game for victoria she's in the middle of both of them the girls are going to choose Lex and Dougie before her and vice versa. She should want to go to the end with the hot chocolates because I feel like she has a leg up within that five-person alliance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, I thought you were about to say something. But no, I, well, I, I, definitely... I was, but then you said, all right, go so I'm going to try. No, go for it, go for it, go for it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, Sorry, someone said something that just threw me off in the comments. Um, yeah, I uh, thank you. I guess. Um, oh, this is a podcast. Never mind. It's so <laughs> funny. Who said that? That is so funny. I love and appreciate you for that comment. That is so good. Uh, <laughs> um, um, she didn't laugh, but um, I I think ultimately Victoria really solidified Todd's uh, loyalty, which is absolutely fair, absolutely valid. Um, But Avery is not Victoria. I think people assume that it's by proximity or by association, but it doesn't take much for someone to be like, actually, we're not that close, so let me just put you up. And I just feel like Avery doesn't really necessarily have that relationship that Todd has with uh, Avery has that relationship with Todd that necessarily Bailey does or Victoria does. So it actually doesn't benefit her at all. And she could have just put Goose and Todd up on the block. He could have been a pawn and Goose would have gone home. That would have benefited Avery's game. Like, I just don't understand why the choice of Matt was done aside from the fact that Victoria strong armed her. The gameplay that I think that people were kind of 
saying Anthony was doing in the beginning is kind of turning into what Victoria is now currently doing. And she's upsetting people. She upset Kayla. Today we saw a little turmoil with that. She's upsetting Lexus. She's upsetting Anthony. And so I think she's doing moves or she's going out of her way to do moves that don't actually benefit her as much as she thinks they do. Um, but regardless, she's in a really good position in the game, but she is morphing to be the target, even above Anthony, in my opinion. And I think Anthony's seeing that. I think Lexus is seeing that. I think uh, Goose is seeing that. I'm, we're seeing Goose and Todd really connect recently, which is interesting. So uh, I think she's doing too much for a payoff that's not worth much. Absolutely. I mean, let, let, let's talk about Victoria, I guess, then, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I, I think Victoria last week until, you know, the executive veto came into play and everything got flipped on its head. I think she was doing really good. I think that she was in the middle. I think she even identified, like, I don't want to be winning stuff. I don't really want to be calling the shots. And also, I just want to, like, stay back and relax. And she was able to do that for a very long time. But unfortunately, as I've been saying this whole podcast, like, one thing Big Brother Canada specifically likes to do is just throw twists in. And you, you do not know what's, what's going to happen. So... Um, once that came in and she was shown to be like in the middle, everyone wants her to do something. She finally picked a side. It's like she's now in a position where it's like, all right, you kind of got to be upfront about it. Um, and I think she's turned to her own worst nightmare. I think she's turned to the thing that she was worried about, which is like Vic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's going from Victoria to Spicy V. Uh, you know, so it's like um, it's interesting to see how she's playing the game. Like, She's in a very powerful position still. She has alliances with, like, almost every single person in the house right now. But, like, it's, as Josie said, it's pissing people off, you know? Like, um, I'm looking at, like, her making a side alliance with, like, Tide and Bailey. And, like, they think that's a three-person alliance. And, hey, if it works, great. But, like, you know, like, I don't know. Um, I, I'm honestly going to sit here and say I don't think – Either Vic or Anthony are winning the season. I think that their times are finished. And it's going to be an uphill battle for either one of them. I think they both are still in a position where if they're not sitting next to each other, they will probably both lose, depending on the person. But, like, I, I think that it's a very slim chance that they can beat a lot of these newbies right now. But um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Do you think that the Anthony-Victoria domination train is still in effect, or are they are their days numbered? I think it depends on like I have I see a harder path for Anthony Lexis than I do for, for Victoria. I feel like her trajectory depends on who gets the next who has power next because I truly don't know what Dougie was gonna do or Lexis is gonna do if they do win. They seem against them. I don't think they need to be as pissed off as they are. They need to get this. Bailey is the main culprit. They need to get Bailey or Todd out of the game. But Dougie is keenly aware of how Victoria has been playing and how she has play been playing the hot chocolates against each other. She's been in the ear of the women about Dougie Lexus. She's been in the ear of Dougie, Lex Dougie Lexus about the women and other people. Anthony truly was keeping his allies at bay in regards to spicy and she was not doing the same that's why i do like when she says in the diary room she wants to ride to the end with anthony i don't believe it because why the hell are you why, why are you then poisoning people against him if you truly want to go to the end with him you, you could do you could choose other people but she really chooses dougie so i don't know what's gonna happen i still think if if like bailey wins then a kayla wins like and then at Avery when she's going to be fine, I think, unless she gets exposed. But I really uh, want to – go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, you know, you're fine. I, I am going to show a little pushback. I, I So I do agree with you. Um, Like, she's, you know, kind of like burning a lot of bridges. She still is in a good position. Um, yeah. I do – I don't really agree that it's like a bad idea to poison people against Anthony and still, like, yeah. not expect her to want to go to the end with him. I do think – it, I mean, I hate to use U.S. as, like, an example, but, like, I'm thinking of, like, Paul and Josh from Big Brother 19. Mm -hmm. Very close. They had a final two. They honored it. But Josh was poisoning the jury against Paul on his way out. 
just because Paul had such a great game. If he sat in those final two chairs, he could have won. So Josh used the goodbye messages and told everybody what he was doing, and it pissed everybody off, and he won. You know, so in this case, and you know, Anthony's doing the same with Vic. I, I think they're both understanding that both of them are playing semi good games, and it's like, uh, Anthony's over here telling Lexus and all these people, hey. She's talking crap about you. Just watch out for her. I, I, but I'm, I agree. But I'm saying that if it, even if it's happening now, it was going to happen at some point because it's still a a case of jury management. And you need Dougie is, is is Mr. Positivity, the smile on your face guy. If he sits in the end, he's probably going to win no matter who it is. Right. So what you need to do to combat that is like poison people. So it's like, all right, I'm going to still take it to the end. But I'm going to poison you on the way there so I have a better chance of winning, you know? So I think there is a small method to the madness, but I just think that – here's the saying: Correct idea, wrong execution. I, I guess that's okay. the way to, to go about it. But how about you, Josie? How do you feel about it? Ultimately, I think the Anthony and Victoria situation is quite interesting. I think Anthony is in a worse position but I think my stance remains the same in the sense that because Victoria is so good with everyone in the house, a betrayal from Victoria is going to hurt a lot more than a betrayal from Anthony. Like, take the Janine move, the Donna move. Everyone feels more betrayed about Victoria than they do Anthony. I do think they felt some type of way about his goodbye messages, which is, you know, entirely up to him, but hey. They're not in the jury, so they will not be casting a vote. Um, so I think that's the same concept. Even Dennis. Dennis is someone who had conversation with Victoria, and she really had a hand in him leaving. So I just feel like ultimately she is cultivating all these good relationships, and she keeps tearing them down later on. And I think that's the issue. If she can frame it in a way that's like, this is best for my game, that's going to be her saving grace. But I don't know. Hurt feelings can can do a lot. And this cast, they they be feeling their feelings, okay? And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Everyone should feel their feelings, live your truth, real, live your realness. But I think it's a dangerous game to play if you promise everyone that you're good with them, that you have them. A Todd Bailey situation, you're not bringing them to the end over hot chocolate. So there's no way. Let's be fucking for real. Even if she doesn't take Anthony. She's taking Avery. She's taking Kayla before she's taking Bailey and Todd. She's just making alliances to make people pissed off. It's gonna save her, but I'm not gonna be surprised if Bailey is fucking pissed. You did this to Donna, and now you're doing it to me, and then if Todd walks into the jury, and you're doing this to Todd, like, all of these, like, it just feels like, especially with Bailey, you know, that might not sit well with her. And then people like Elijah, who could be in the jury, they might respect Anthony's game more than Victoria's because Anthony has a better relationship, to my knowledge, with Elijah. And I think Elijah felt the most betrayed by Victoria after what happened after he won HOH between the two of them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a very interesting line. But again, the they could be like, actually, I respect game. Game always. But I don't know. It's oh. It's a tricky situation. That's a I really good say- point, Josie. I did not think about like the the strong relationship she has, and then people are going to catch on. She there's nobody she's not willing to throw under that bus if she needs to. That's Correct. Why I, <laughs> that's why I'm interested in seeing like a Dougie Lexus Cola win because I feel like Kayla Avery Spicy if they get win that it's one of them are going to be tripping over themselves to save their necks, exposing whatever. And I really do want to see that because I want. Avery and Kayla to wake the heck up because it's like they have blinders and when it comes to spicy they need they need to see what she's doing because they they're not recognizing it at all but now I will say though I I think that and you know we kind of had this sentiment last season so I'm not going to put too much stock into it but there's Mm -hmm. a whole lot of girl power conversations that's been going on this season and as it does stand you know jury starts the next vote uh it's going to be four majority to win and there's five girls in the house right now. So there is a little hint in the back of my mind. It's like, all right, like I think she can get like three of the girls votes. And it, I think outside of like Anthony, if, if she like betrays the girls for anyone, 
if it's Anthony, I think that they'll be at least a little understanding just because the whole vet conversation, right? There, there's something in the back of my mind. It's like eh, Avery's been feeling some type. I mean, not Avery. Uh, Kayla's been feeling some type way towards uh, Anthony this season. Bailey has had her little like run-ins with Anthony this season. There are some people like Todd and Anthony haven't had any kind of game talk this season. So there is a little thing in the back of my mind. It's like, all right, they will be pissed off, but ultimately – are they still going to reward her for the win because she has a better connection with them as well as just because she's a girl, you know what I'm saying? So there, I'm not saying that like she is like going to win, but there's something in my mind that is going to give her like a small notch above Anthony just because of the conversations. You're like, I'm not going to lie, Bailey. I actually agree with you guys. She can be extremely bitter if she gets betrayed, but like, I'm not going to lie. Bailey's giving me the vibe that like, if you're not taking her to the end, she's going to be bitter against everybody anyway. So, like, that's kind of, like, a hard thing to juggle. And I think she's going to vote for a girl ultimately if she can. Because even her preseason video and confession, she keeps talking about girl power. So, I, I really she, do yeah. believe that. Like, I don't even think she'll take Todd over the girls right now. I'm going to be real with you. So, it's like, she can be mad, but, like, you, like I don't believe she's not going to vote a girl. You want to know? So, I'm so Unless it's a Claudia situation, I do think that there's a chance that she can win, you know, um, but I don't know. My thing is, my fear is, like, I, I do agree with the girl sentiment, like, yes, women to the front, um, as long as your feminism includes people of color. Besides the point, um, I my concern is that Victoria, to me, is potentially going to be the one who has taken out all the girls. That's my fear. I She did it with Donna. She, so she set up Janine. She got out Donna. Those are the two women who are out of the house so far. I'm not saying that she will do this, but it would not surprise me if she does betray, in addition, Bailey. So it's like, okay, what happened to this whole woman story, woman power? And she sold herself so much on this notion that if you, if someone says the right thing or pulls the right trigger, it can all collapse on her. So I think it ultimately will depend on how she navigates the game. But I don't know. I feel like she's been mad reckless. I know you talked about uh, how she she's kind of been more quiet, not really guiding or or making the moves but she has been she's been anthony's strongest soldier she's the one who's actually executing the most between the two of them whether it's anthony's ad agenda or her own and that's why to me i feel like spicy v has never been laid back or chill she's always had her two piece to say she's always influenced people yes dougie may seem like you know, because he's like a little bit bigger, he's a mo much more authoritative. Like, it might seem like he's running the show, but we saw it with the executive power veto. It's the Victoria show, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But it comes with a lot of responsibility. I think it's easier to play from the bottom than play from the top, because from the top, you have to like be much more cutthroat, and it might hurt people more. Versus if you're punching from upwards and you're moving on up, I think people respect that a little bit more. And I don't think Victoria has ever had to punch upwards. I think she's always punching downwards and that's what leaves that bitter taste. So I, I'm interested to see how Sunday night's episode goes because I think that will be very important in the next few days or the next, the rest of the game, sorry. Um, but that's my fear with Victoria. Yeah, I 100% oh, sorry. I'll say real quick. I 100% agree with you. I I don't think that she's not going to betray Bailey. I think Bailey's 100% going to get betrayed. I'm, I'm just letting you know that. It's not about I I, mean, I think Twitter has kind of misunderstood this. Yeah, there's a girls alliance, but I'm gonna be real with you. Like the girls alliance is second. Like hot chocolate is first in Vic's uh, mind. Like every confessional, she's talking about hot chocolates. I know, like she talks crazy sometimes about like throwing Kayla under the bus, uh, or like she get pissed off at Dougie. But like, that's just Vic. She spirals. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to the sentiment of like playing from the bottom, I think new age competition reality shows really like champions like under the radar gameplay playing from the bottom part and that's fine but there's still like you can win from the top like i've seen plenty mm -hmm. of people i've seen loud personalities like i'm thinking of 
she lost though. But Vanessa from BB17 easily could have won if she got to the end. Um, I'm thinking of freaking Tamar from Big Bro- Celebrity Big Brother. She was very loud and very upfront, and she got to the win. Sometimes people under some sometimes people respect that type of thing. Like, don't even forget, like at the beginning of the season, how many people were like, "Oh my God, it's Victoria! I love Victoria! I want to work with Victoria!" I'm actually curious to see how many people who join her team are still in the game. I want to look back at that, but. Regardless, these people are huge fans of her. Like, like so. I've got many. <laughs> yeah, like, like if most of these people are like pissed at that point, it's like you you came here knowing what she's capable of at the same time, you know. So, um, I'm 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 I agree with you though. Good, you know. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm yapping right now. Yeah, I was just gonna piggyback um, what Josie said about Spicy's hand and everything. Like when she was having that discussion that contention discussion with Dougie in the bathroom and, and he was, she was talking about, we've made all these moves for you. I can't believe she, she, they had, she, she is the reason why Dawn is gone. If it wasn't for Victoria being suspicious of that handshake for whatever reason that threw her, threw her over, Donna would still be there. She was the one, like you guys said, that set up J9. Like all along the way, the things that Dougie has wanted to do in his mind, he thought that his alliance was okay with. And now Spicy's like, well, we did all that for you. He was like, what are you talking about for me? That's because to him, she's presenting it like everybody's cool with it. But to the girls, we're playing Dougie's game. We have to start doing things. And that's how she gets them riled up. That's how she get, got them to agree to the mad thing. Like, we can't keep playing Dougie's game. We can't keep taking out people for Dougie. We haven't done, like, I watched her say these things, and it works. I'm like, are, you, are y'all thinking? You were there for all of this to see how it goes down. I mean, to be fair, if, if, you, if you rewind like a week ago, we would be saying a whole different thing. Like, why is everyone doing everything that Dougie tells them to do? Everyone's Dougie's puppet mat. We were also on the same boat, to be fair. You know what I'm saying? Like I, everybody was like, they're just doing what Anthony wants. Nobody's playing their own game. They're all sleep. Like, like to call spade a spade, this was the narrative everywhere, like last week. I think I think the issue is that like it's Again, it seems like Anthony is the main person, but when you look at it, like the holistic view of everything, you realize that it's really, again, the Victoria show. And I think that played just like the house. I think that's the perspective that a lot of the viewers got as well, which is understandable. Um, But ultimately, again, a lot of these moves were Victoria's. And I think when I personally was saying, well, Anthony's running the game. It wasn't that Victoria isn't running the game as well. It just, again, it looks like Anthony's show, but I think that's Victoria's strength right now is it looks like she's really pulling the strings when it looks like it's Anthony. But at some point they're going to realize because at this point, everyone who's been aligned with Anthony is starting to go. Vivek has gone. Matt has gone. You can't keep saying we're doing what Anthony wants when logistically, it's not actually looking like that, you know what I mean? And so, and even the Dennis move, like that Dennis move, three people got into the room to convince Vivek. She was one of them. She needed to be there. Like, I. that's why to me, Kayla specifically, I think she's the one who's the most likely to actually wake up. I think she's annoyed with Spicy V with some of the way she's executed things, which again, I think, Victoria's gone into a lot of more arguments, which is why I'm again concerned about her jury management moving forward. Because I think now she's a little bit more relaxed. She can feel however she types where I feel like her guard was really up in the beginning. I think it's slowly starting to fade. And as a result, we're getting a little bit more of that spicy from Spicy B. And it's engaging in conversations that make certain people type of people feel some type of way, including her allies. So I think I think it's just very interesting that comment about Anthony and like how everyone was saying she, they were playing Anthony's game. Anthony needs Victoria, Victoria needs Anthony. And so to me, when I was making those comments, it was mainly at the newbies. Like the newbies mm-hmm. felt like they aren't playing the game. Like and, and I'm sorry, Avery's on my draft. I, I like to root for the people who are on my draft. Okay. I like to do that. 
Avery, what the fuck was that move? I'm sorry, what the flip was that move? Because it actually served you nothing. Nothing. Like, why would you? She's a super fan. Like, I, there's nothing that she could say to me during an exit interview or whatnot that would make me be go like, yeah, you're totally right for doing that, not move. Because to me, it actually serves no value. I know that people are saying, well, like, it's what the house wanted. So, the house is your allies. It's your HOH. Listen, do what you I would, need to do. I would, ever since the first episode where we saw Ave like talk about how much she loved Vic, I was like, this is Izzy all over again like I, yeah I like I, <laughs> um but uh the the well yeah the hot chocolates is like the reverse cookout i put this on twitter i'm like anthony and and vic are like x and tiff just swap the roles right anthony was so busy trying to make all these extra connections out the alliance trying to prepare for like uh oh, i'm the only guy here so like i need this guy's alliance here and it's it's crumbling at a very quick pace and then you got Vic, where it's like, yeah, she's making bonds outside the group now, but she spent a lot of the pre-jury just focusing on really getting these girls on her side to the point that, like, eh, between her and, and Dougie, I'm going to listen to Vic. You know what I'm saying? So um, unless Kayla, Avery, and Lexis decide for a, one of those three to be the leader of the alliance, they're still going to listen to Vic or they're going to listen to Anthony at the end of the day, you know? Um, but... I, I'm very interested to see how this all pans out. I do think that it, it, if I can compare Vic to someone, she really does remind me of of uh, Rachel Riley. Like the like Big Brother 13, uh, Rachel's win was very quizzical at points because of production. And I mean, the executive veto is also like an example of that. But at the end of the day, Rachel still won and she was doing it in chaotic fashion she fought with people she was <laughs> talking shit to everybody she was doing whatever she wanted but she was always in the majority alliance and when she was down bad she won a competition i'm not gonna lie if victoria ever gets betrayed i can see her winning a veto going on the spree like this is one thing people really do need to worry about because this hasn't been a problem yet but victoria and anthony still being here is so dangerous for comps specifically victoria like she did good her first season but she's still doing really good at these comps this season and i'm like this is not someone you want to touch like final seven, final six. Like she can comp her way to the end if you keep her here. So um, I'm, if it's up to me, I would love to see a Alexis HOH. I'd like to see a Kayla HOH or an Anthony HOH. I want to see what one of those three are going to do. I want to see one of them like start some shit. What's so funny? But I just, I, I want to see something. But, but go ahead. What's so funny, Josie? Okay, so the reason why I was laughing is because I put up a tweet last week before everyone HOH, and I said, I want a Tola HOH. I want a Tola HOH. I still want a Tola HOH. I'm sorry. No one is going to convince you otherwise. Everyone was like, well, like, Tola's not working with the girls. I need y'all to understand something. I'm team fun entertainment, okay? I have my favorites here and there, but I want to be entertained because I'm not in the house. Y'all are. So I would like to see a Tola HOH because that would wreak havoc. Imagine. And you know what? It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. But when he wins that double HOH, that double eviction HOH, oh, that triple H H eviction HOH, it's over. Tola will put up three women. And I would love to see the chaos because in my opinion, the girls in the hot chocolate are like, oh my God, we're going to make it to the final four either with Anthony or with Bailey, then what? Once the four of you, then what? Because one of you is at the bottom, and I fear it's Miss Kayla. I fear it's Miss Kayla. It's it's Lexus, Kayla, Avery, Victoria. Victoria's a top dog, okay? <laughs> so things about the people, I think they need a rude awakening. And when two of them go on the walk, oh, that's when the game will shift. And I need that to happen for Avery and Kayla's game. Yeah. I am pro women, but I I need I need them to wake up because right now I still feel like they're it's Victoria's game, which is fine. We love Spicy V as well, um, mm. but it's not an individual game, and I need people to play an individual game. That's yeah. what's pissing me off. I think I hate the whole collective. Let's let's be one. Like not one of you leaves the check. You can't split a car. 
<laughs> you, you might order skip would. the dishes for one another, but you can't all split the car or the cash. Yeah. You don't I'm think you would put up like goose or Todd? No. Okay. No. No. You just look back no. on goose. He might not put up Victoria, but he he will put up. He will put up. I'll give you something Avery. more spicy. I want to see a yeah. goose exchange. No. That's what I want. I, I'm with Josie. <laughs> Said, that's why I said earlier, I want somebody that is going to make Kayla, Avery, and even Spicy start talking. If they really start talking, if they really start getting stuff out there, and Anthony starts inserting his opinion, Victoria's everything that she has done and how she's pitting people against each other, and while and then going to them and saying what they said and back and forth and back and forth, it's been working. But if she gets caught up, Goose is the only one that's ever called out anything that that she has done. Then he ended up on the block, but he's still here. But I want those girls to wake up because they literally are like sheep for Victoria. They are not thinking about their own game. She is convincing them that what she wants is for the collective and is what's best for all of them. And it ain't. <laughs> it is not. I don't even think the map move was best for her. So I'm with it. I want it so bad. And I... I'm scared about this twist on Sunday, though, because whatever's going to happen is going to happen before we even get an HOH, whoever goes. And I don't and I honestly don't want it to be something that the majority can control because I'm worried Spicy will take the three girls with Tola, Bailey and uh, Goose and get one of the other three, which I don't want to happen. What is it? So it's called like a horror movie something. What, what is it? Movie uh, Massacre. Called? It's it's double... madness movie movie horror madness or movie murder massacre, madness or... movie oh. massacre. If they got the word massacre, then they're oh, massacre. more than one person. Yes. So more yes. than one person is definitely getting eliminated. Massacre. Um yeah. interesting. Okay. I and that's an interesting way to start off Jerry with the double or something would be crazy. But listen, I, I I keep saying like I I'm I don't know what to expect from this show. I wasn't expecting a freaking safety chain. To give Dana someone an executive veto, they yeah. they are very creative. Dana rejection. Right yeah, like I don't, I wouldn't be shocked if production's like, all right, let's shift this back in another direction to make things interesting and give Anthony side, you know. But I also can see just Goose going home, <laughs> you know. So I don't, I, I don't. Also, Goose might stay. Let, real quick, let's talk about that. Is he sliding his way into a good position if Todd or Bailey wins HOH? Because if they win it, win. he might do some. I'm not gonna lie, he could do some. And if Anthony Sy wins, he still could do some. I don't see Goose being thrown up unless he's like a pawn. But even if he's thrown up, I don't really see Goose leaving anytime soon unless it's against like someone people care about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, is he about to be the next block star? Like, like what's going on here? If Goose wins, I'll, I'll, I'll eat a crayon. Like, there's. I <laughs> I would be so mad. Like that's what I'm so worried that if really hot chocolate starts going for each other, I like I see why Lexus and Dougie feel the way they do, completely valid. But if they go for each other first, those those three spicy or er, Bailey, Todd, Goose are just gonna sit back and just let it happen, and they're gonna fly under the radar. That's my worry right there. I don't want that to happen. That'd be so. Could you imagine them three at the end? I would be so mad. Listen, if it happens, it's Janelle's fault because she manifested Bailey <laughs> staying. All right. Oh, that's the wrong one. There you go. All right. I'm not gonna um, lie. I I just wanted to say quickly that I don't think Goose will win this game already. I'm just gonna be so for real. Here's okay. why I feel like he. He lost all social capital he had during his HOH, and it wasn't much to begin with. So that was a little worrisome. I think I think he is a perfect person to like drag along, but no one trusts Goose anymore. I think that trust has been broken and shattered, and I don't think it be it can be rebuilt rebuilt with some of the other women. Avery literally said, you're my target. You're going home. And then Tola won each, like the veto and then stuff happened. But you can't repair that with Avery anymore, right? Then I think 
there's so much mistrust with Goose. Like even our conversation, the exit interview we did with Matt, Matt was saying how, oh, honestly, Goose might have been telling the truth, but because everyone had turned him into this whole thing, this whole pariah, <laughs> that I I wasn't understanding it. And I think a lot of people still feel this way. I think he has a relationship with Todd, but Todd is not that high on the totem pole. I think Goose is such easy pickings that they might ignore him for a while, but ultimately to give him the, what's his speech? What's his gameplay? What's his, like, what, what is it? Five, he needs to win HOH and get some respect back, and he needs to comp his way to the end. That's how he's going to win. That's it. We need a, a, a goose. But is he going to do the right moves? Like, I don't, you're I don't making think it seem so. like Goose is going to make the right. right moves. I don't think he would but ever make the never, right Ian didn't make the right moves either. Ian was horrible at Big Brother and still won. That's yeah, but you're said. comparing Ian Terry to like Elijah. Listen, like his Ian HOH was next abysmal. to Victoria. Ian next to Victoria. Victoria pisses everybody off, and we get it, and we get a goose win. That's what we need. But I really, in my heart of hearts, still, I just, no, he's I just him. don't see. I I just don't see him one making it to that final two chair. And if he does, it's because he's like the Victoria of season 16. Like that's I just want I, him to stay around long enough that I can keep hearing him saying like, what the flip? And yeah. then like, no, when they did that prank okay, about no. like the slop, he was like, who the flip did it? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. I said, oh, you're a big man now. Go on. Yeah, was Go on. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you get him. Okay, Goose. Where, where is this man? That wasn't that wasn't Goose. That was Elijah. Okay, he bucked up. He said, Elijah. "Who did it?" That was Elijah. So somebody flipping the mid to who, who the flip did it? I need a flip sound effect. At this That's rate, I would just I we have the cameras. I'm gonna we're gonna see who did it. Just say who did it. Like who the flip <laughs> did it? I said, "Oh, where have you been?" Okay, I'm here for it. I subscribed. I liked. I shared. Oh. That was so funny, man. I'm sorry, but all right, that's all I really have to talk about. You guys got anything else you want to chat about before we uh, start closing out? Who would you guys like to see go out and whatever is going to happen on Sunday? Oh, I think there's things that there's not someone I'm like, I want you to go. Like, I feel like there are seasons where I'm like, I need this person to go. Like, Martin, I needed him to leave the house, I was over it, I needed him out outside the house. But I don't feel that way about the specific house guests. However, I would like to see Oh, this is such a bad thing to say. I think for ultimate entertainment, if someone from Hot Chocolate were to go, I think it would cause chaos and not Anthony. And not Anthony. I think if one of Hot Chocolate goes, it will cause ultimate chaos. And that is what I would like to see as a viewer. Now, as a black woman, I would not like to see particular individuals leave, but I'm team fun TV. So I think that would be interesting to watch, but there's not a particular person I would like to see leave. Um, I would like to see someone leave that will benefit my draft overall though. That would be great. I would like to win. Uh, I have Anthony, I have Anthony, Avery, uh, I have no one from my draft. Has, I have Todd, Avery, Todd, Anthony, and I have someone else. But I don't think, I don't think anyone from my draft has left yet. I'm just trying to think who that other person is. Here, here's a formula. I, ready? I'm gonna the person. I like this person a lot. I think they're great TV. They're funny, and I really think they're a damn good player because they don't let up with what they want, and they stay in rooms with their people, and they never go away. Um, is Bailey? Because I think that her Janaki, oh, you, know, you just muted yourself. <laughs> Lord, this technical difficulty is just sending me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you heard. I want Bailey. You want Bailey go, going? I like her. I think she's a hell of a player. I think she does not let up. She stays in rooms with her girls. And if she sees Anthony, she's like, get over there, get in there. What are, what are they talking about? Like, she's on top of it. She's not going to let, like, nothing happen under her watch. However, and I love her. And she's on my draft. But for what I would like to see happen in the game, she is a huge, like, wedge. 
and what I, and I don't even know how she would leave honestly she I really don't she'd have to be a she, I really don't but she is a huge wedge in what I want to happen stress I like her I think she's a great player but I want her to go all right I want to see Bailey gone think that she's going to give us the best TV yeah. that she's going to fight with people goose HOH he throws up Avery get his look back and he's still targeting Bailey they lose the veto, and then Bailey gets voted out. I want to see her fighting everybody. I want to see her calling everybody out, calling them fake. Throw some, throw some crazy, some crazy names out there. I go cancel. Just say some crazy stuff. That's what I want. I just wanted to clarify that we drafted each three people, so all three or five people are still here. I just wanted to clarify that. I thought I had a fourth one, but we didn't. We gave Goose and and Donna, I think, or Goose and someone. Who else got left? So- who, who else still got left? I'm curious. Who do you still have yet? Uh, I let got me Alexis, check. Alexis, Victoria, who else? So right now, from what I can tell, hold I think on. I only have Bailey. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, I have it. Ooh. So Katie had Vivek. <laughs> she had Vivek, this, and that. All gone. Boom. Yeah. Katie out of the door. Eliminated. That's why she stopped showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Vivek. Do you remember? We were like, oh, I want Vivek. Oh, yeah. Like, really think... Boo, Vivek, uh, Ro- Rohan. De- no, 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 no. I knew, I knew, Ju- I, I'm sorry. I knew Julie. Y'all were hyping her up. I made a tweet about it. Y'all can find it. I said, y'all hyping her up. She will not be winning. I think she will get first boot. That being There's said, I had, I had Avery, Anthony, and Todd. Originally, I had Victoria, but me and Josh, uh, not me and Josh, my God. Me and Isaiah did the official switch because those are the all-stars we wanted anyways before we knew who they were. Um, and then I, Isaiah has That's Tola, cool. Lexus, and Victoria. And hey. you have... Yes, and, you, and then Janelle has Kayla, Bailey, and Janine. And then we that's gave Donna team. and Elijah to the, that's, the public. That's a good team right there, Kayla and Bailey, but I still ba- Bailey gotta go. I'm sorry. And I love her. I think she's I like her, but mm. yeah, Katie died for our sins. It's all right. <laughs> but um all right. Well, with that being said, that's our podcast for tonight, everybody. So thank you so much for watching. If you are curious and want to further support our channel, you can follow us at silent underscore podcast or at silent podcast on social media plat, IG, Twitter. Uh, YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Help us with the algorithm. And if you're listening on the audio platforms, five stars for a review or anything like that. But if it's not something you like, just don't do it at all. Thank you so much for listening. Josie, where can people find you? What are you up to? Uh, y'all can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at JosianXNM, J-O-S-I-A-N-E-X-N-M. Um, I am here doing the exit interviews uh, in addition to recapping every week uh, with Isaiah and our regular crew. Um, in addition to that, I'm thinking potentially we're going to be bringing back Just So Damn Messy. Uh, it's my podcast, baby, that uh, we haven't touched in a while, but there's some messy, messy television that needs to be documented. And I fear that I will be of service uh, during the summer. So I'm excited for that uh, as well. Um, and yeah, that's everything for me. All right. How about you, Janelle? I'm just Janelle Michelle on everything Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Pop on on here with you guys when you have me. That's all. All right. And like usual, you can find me at Eight Ball Bangers everywhere. Uh, Doing this with uh, these guys every Friday, so you can check out for that. Um, as well as Isaiah and Nicole show, we will be returning next week. We're bringing on our great friend Lavina for a very fun ranking podcast. So make sure you check that out. As well as uh, Summer will be here with us next week for uh, the recap for BB Can. So make sure you check that out too. But um, okay, until next time, have a good one. Bye.